Here we go, guys. Welcome back to another video. This one is a big one. You can see the GU's behind me. I've been wheeling this thing super hard. She's looking a little bit worse to wear. You can see some scratches. The wrap's coming off. It's all right. It's time to get a car. It's time to get a car for the 4x4 series. Maddie doesn't want me using the GU anymore. I don't know why. It's time to go car shopping. We are going to find me a car this episode, and it is huge. Massive, massive moment. I'm finally getting a car, so stay tuned. Let's go. All right, before we go shopping, I want to let you guys know where I'm sort of sitting, what cars I'm looking at, what price I'm in, so we can sort of go through the process together so you guys can understand why I'm saying no to certain cars, why I'm looking seriously at certain cars, so you can be a part of the process just like I am. So price, Matty has given me 70 grand, and what, what, what? Before you guys, keyboard warriors, go into the comments and be like, 70 grand is too much for a first car, blah, blah, blah. I agree with you. This whole series of me building a car is not meant to be a first car. It is a car that is reachable for the average Aussie. It's attainable for the average Aussie. Matty's built his $250,000 Land Cruiser. He's built his three to $400,000 Ram. But me, I can't. You, the average Aussie, we can't afford to go buy a Ram or a Land Cruiser and put all those mods on it. 70 grand is the total price. That's not just purchase price of the car, that is the entire price. So I'm gonna be looking at cars between 30 and 40 grand, allowing me to spend between 25, 30, 35 grand on mods. As much as I'd love to go out and buy a $20,000 Patrol and just go to town on mods and make it be able to climb up the side of Everest and do backflips. That's not quite relatable for the average Aussie out there. Over the past couple years, the most bought cars are dual cab utes. A lot of people behind the screen right now probably own some form of dual cab ute, so that's exactly what I'm gonna build. I'm looking for a dual cab ute with anywhere between minimal to 150, 160,000 Ks on it, just a safe range, and that's what Maddie has told me to look for. I'm on my way to my very, very first car dealership. I'm hoping to look at a bunch of different cars, and I'm hoping to see what options are out there, what prices I'm looking at. Lego. All right, made it to the first car dealership, car yard. I have found my first opponent, Mr. Volkswagen Amarok. Price check. It's locked. It does already have a canopy. It doesn't look too bad, actually. It looks pretty modern in there. Only problems with the Amarok. Reliability, obviously. Servicing costs are huge on these. I don't think I can spend Maddie's money on a Volkswagen. Sorry, Amarok owners. <laughs> Ooh, this is a little bit more modified. GME, front bar, spotties, weather shields. Open? Nope. Blacked out sports bar. Blacked out badging. It's a nice little looking D-Max. Price, price, no price. Can't make a decision then. First thoughts on the Triton. The new ones have actually come a long way since the old Mitsubishi days where they were just shocking with reliability. Still a Triton. The big thing for me is that the axle actually sits a lot further forward on Tritons. So when we load the back of it up, potentially put a canopy and stuff on it, all the weight's gonna be sitting too far back because look how much tub is on the back. It's the only dual cab ute in the class to have such a far forward axle. They're known to actually snap the chassis when there's too much weight. We'll save this one. All right, on to the next one. Mm, Mr. Hilux, here we go. Oh, oh shit, 29894. Okay, this is a big competitor. It's got the 2.8 litre turbo diesel. It's extremely reliable. It's fairly cheap to service. I like this one because it's bog stock and I can show you guys the complete build of it. Ooh. All right, that's not, not comfortable at all. Oh, 100 and, oh shit. 200,000 Ks. Ah, could be worse. Sort of want to avoid that many Ks though. Damn it. I actually quite like it. You got the basic controls, cruise control. Oh, the Hilux feels so damn good. That's a good start. Hiluxes are definitely at the top of my list. I was actually looking at Land Cruisers as well, 79s. I prefer a 76, but the 70th anniversary is only just a little bit out of my price range. Like it's got all these really nice features. You are way too expensive. No Raptors on the channel for now. Mr. Ford. Mr. XLT Ranger. How many monies 
would it be to buy? Oh, this actually looks all right. So the other Land Cruiser I saw was white and maybe because it's sandy, it's brought it down into almost the price range. Too expensive. Ah, uh, yep, another, another 79. We'll see if we can afford it. This one looks a little bit older. We're on the move. Next dealership coming up. Another Hiler, 40, 41. A little bit too expensive, but we've got a big tray on the back. This looks like an ex-mining vehicle. Oh, low Ks. Oh no. Oh, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, do you actually think you're gonna get 120 grand for a Land Cruiser with nothing on it? Mate, that's just what the market's doing. They're flying you're not, out the door. You're not, mate, you're not. I'll give you 30 for it. I know, but it's not sandy, it's graphite. Would you think about 37 and a half? Mate, you're off your head. No. Okay. Time to talk BT. Probably $10,000 more than what I really want to spend. Have a little sit. Oh, smells good. Okay, so we got a big screen. She's fairly comfy in here. I only heard good things about these new BTs. They're pretty much a D-Max. They've got the 4JJ3 motor, bulletproof, and all the Isuzu underneath with a Mazda badge. Solid option, I think. Oh, I see 27000 Hmm, no. Nah. Made it to the next yard. All right. Dual cab ute for days. I was looking at this one online, actually. The N70. Roof racks already. We've got a hard top on the tub. That's going to be handy. Sports bar. Already got all terrains. She's already got a safari snorkel and a bull bar. It's got the three liter too. The one KD, which is a great engine. Sick engine. Someone big has been sitting on this. Alrighty, so we are back in the car after seeing those first few cars, after the first few dealers. In a nutshell, Hilux, great option. If we can find one with a little less case for a similar price, honestly, I don't think I could turn it down. Ruling out Volkswagen for reliability, Triton for the diff being too far forward. Yeah, and I'm sort of open. Sangyong LDV, gone. Everything else is still open. Let's go to this next dealership. I've seen a few cars online. We'll see what we think. Oh, we made it. Made it. Off-road pros at Caboolture. I've sort of brought it down to four options. A Hilux, whether it's an N70 or an N80. N70 is probably what I'm going to have to go because of the pricing. Ranger for the right price, D-Max or Navara. I'm going to have a quick squiz here. See what they've got. First cab off the rank. Now she does have the Toyota bar on it. That's all right. We could probably get rid of that on Marketplace. It's not a bad option, actually. Weather Shields, D-Max. Have a look at the pamphlet. It does have all trains already with steelies. Already got the GME whip. Oh, it's the LST. She's the top of the line. Ooh, we finally found a Navara. It's got the stock Nissan, bull bar, ARB spotties. Got a GME whip, snorkel, looks like the Nissan standard snorkel. 168,000. Ooh, 37,990. Mm. Suspension? Oh yeah, does look like it's got some sort of lift on it. And the biggest thing that I love about these Navaras. Coil rear end, massive, massive bonus to every other dual cab on the market. Huge for off-road, 36,900. Hmm? Just out of the 35, I really want to... Oh my God, 160,000 Ks. Are you kidding me? Holy shit. An N80, it's an SR, you can tell. Doesn't have the LED lights, the fancy boys. Oh my, yeah, right. She's immaculate. We, we sat in one at Toyota. Steering wheel cover. Oh, it smells good too. It's calling my name. Okay. Oh gosh. I'm gonna have to talk to Maddie, go away and come back, but wow, 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 wow. Bit of, bit of tickling, might get that down to 35. Just having another look at the N70. I really just don't know. Three liter, 2.8, Toyota badge, Toyota reliability, Nissan, not as much. How's it going? What are we chasing? You, you all good to be on camera? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. What's your name? Jake. Jake, nice to meet you, I'm Tom. 
Tom? So I can't really decide. I'm looking at the N70s. I've been to a few other dealers. I've ruled out Amrox, um, Cholera. <laughs> so you want something tough, durable? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Exactly so you're right. So you be operating most of the time. A lot. Is, or yep. Lux is you can't kill them. So yeah. The N80. What the do N80. we? What do we think? Well, it's newer. It's gonna be nicer. New dash. Everything. Um, yeah. Three and a half ton towing as opposed to two and a half ton towing. Oh, okay. So there's a big difference there. Factory rear e locker. Mmm. Gonna be a lot smoother as all new cars are. Yeah. Okay. Gonna be better. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a six-speed auto? It is. Yeah. And yep. is that? Is that five or six? That's five. That's five. That's five. Okay, so probably better fuel economy too? Definitely better fuel economy, um, yep. more power. I cannot, I honestly cannot decide. Just N70, N80 nav. I yeah. think I'm gonna have to go away and uh, talk to the boss. Yep. See what he says, but appreciate you coming, coming out of the office yeah, and no having a chat to us. There's some seriously good options here and I serious, I don't know what to do. I do not know what to do. I'm gonna have to call up Big Bakes. He's gonna have to tell me what to do. Tell them all the options, but oh, Max gives me butterflies, eh? Oh. Alrighty, guys, sorry to interrupt this video. I really hope you're enjoying it. I'm looking at my car right there, and you guys are about to find out. But we have just released a very new giveaway. Four meter tinny, full off road trailer by Black Marlin, and a 20 horsepower Merc, the ultimate island hopping, fishing, adventuring package. It is running from now for the next month. Anything you buy off the explorelife.com.au will get you with a chance to win. Enjoy the rest of this video because I'm going to go drive my car. See ya! Alright, Maddie's back in the office. He's back from the States. Every time I've gone to call this guy, he... Gone. Every... Because he knows I want a car. So, he's back and, uh... Well, g'day, mate. I'm not back. He's I'm not, not here. Sorry. What are you... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. You know I'm on a wheelie chair, eh? I can still chase you. Alright, you've got no option. I'm here. You're here. We are going to talk about my car. All right, well, I just got a new car. Yeah, is it my turn? Maybe come in a couple months. Oh! <laughs> we'll talk about it. Nah, it's happening. Let's get it done. We need to get you in something before Okay. Before it's Christmas. I've been busy breaking your GU. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I come back, the thing's a bucket. <laughs> so, it's time to put me in my car. We've got four options, Matty. Right on. We've got N80 Hilux. Yeah. N70 Hilux. Yeah. We've got D-Max. And we've got the NP300 Navara. I've sort of wiped out Triton and some of the other Chinese imports. Yeah. Um, we've, I'm we've, had, we've had a brief yarn. So obviously yeah. we're gonna, we want to do the dual cab. Yeah. The dual cab ute. We don't have, well, we do. We've got one in the fleet now. We've got the Ram, but let's be mm. honest. That's not quite We've been talking we're about after. my car for longer than this Ram. <laughs> yeah. And you went and got a Ram. <laughs> I got excited. I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> All right, D-Max. It's a little bit out of the price range. Like yeah. with the Ks you're looking for between 100 and 200,000 Ks, they're a little bit more expensive and I haven't found a good one Personally, in the right price range. Yeah, all right, all right, all right let's rule it out. Can it. NP300. Yep, coil um, rear. Coil rear and yep. rear locker standard. Yep. So that's like one of my big things for wheeling, having the coil rear in a dual cab only happens in a Ram, which I can't afford, or an NP300, which is the only dual cab car that can do it. What else you got? I've got N70, so it's slightly older. Nah, can it? I, there's a bloke that drives that N80 out the front. Okay. If we're building a Hilux, we're building an N80. We're not doing an N70. N70's too old. Okay. Nah, resale, resale will be sh compared to an N80. Okay, well, I'm fine by that because N80s have a rear locker standard. Yeah. They've got a little bit nicer interior. They're a little bit more expensive, but we still have the budget that you've given me. At least it's still relevant, whereas the N70's dead anyway. So. <laughs> You've just offended all the N70 boys. <laughs> Alright, so N80 or MP300. Oh, We've got two Nissans sat True. in the car park. We've already got two patrols. True. I've just given away the Land Cruiser. Yep. Let's go another. Let's Toyota. Resale value. Okay. Resale value on an N80 Hilux. Yep. We'll whoop the resale value on a bloody MP300. You're right. Go, go find a Hilux. You've got the okay. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh what have I done? It's been a few days in between these and I've had a look on Marketplace, I've had a look on car sales. I think I've made a decision. So on Marketplace, I've found that most of the cars there are actually more expensive than the stuff at Off-Road Pros, the one that I saw the Hiluxes and trucks that I saw a few days ago. So we're back, he's given me the work card and 
We're back at Off-Road Pros, baby. Let's go buy a car! Oh my gosh, today's the day. We're back. Jake, where are you? Jake, here he is. There you go. I'm good. I've I've come back the way. with a decision. Yeah. So I went away, I had a little bit of a think, what you told me, what I learnt about the N70, the yep. N80 versus the Nav, and I have decided to go with the Hilux. <laughs> I went with the That's Hilux. The I, I couldn't buy a Nissan. Yeah. I couldn't yep. do it. I couldn't do it with Maddie's money. He's already got the GU, so. No, you can't, you can't beat the Toyota badge. I'm stoked. You guys going to town on it as far as the 79 or? Oh, actually, I don't have the money that Maddie does. <laughs> so I am doing a bit of a budget build on it. Yep. I'm not spending 250. I'm yep. spending about 70 in total, so yep. I think I've got some got some room to spend some good coin on some modification. Bought a car, baby. Toyota, couldn't go with anything else. Could have, but didn't. I'm so, so happy right now. Massive thanks to Jake and the team from Off-Road Pros, giving us that little bit of advice that really helped me. Oh my God. Welcome to the team, baby. This thing is gonna see some sh It's gonna do some sh I'm so stoked. I'm gonna do some K's in this thing. We're gonna push the limits. And it's a car that you guys can do it yourself. Most people behind the camera. I'm not saying every 17 and eight year, 18 year old can do it, but most of you guys behind the camera can buy this car and modify this sort of car. And I'm so excited to show you guys the entire process. On a real note from me to you, thank you guys for all the support. You allow us to do this sort of thing and buy new cars and do what we do. The only badge, baby. This is brotherhood. This is brotherhood. Let's drive this thing out of here. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. My new car. <laughs> oh, it's actually, I need to turn the brightness down. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jake. No worries. I Enjoy. can't wait to come back and show you what this thing looks like. In... Destroyed. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. I think it's time to jump in and Say goodbye. Too easy. Well, let's go! Here she is. My N80 Hilux. Oh my God. I've had this thing for a couple days now, been driving it back and from work. I think it's time to show you guys a little bit more detailed, give you a little 360 walk around inside and out of this thing because I don't think it's gonna look like this for very long. All right, let's start up front. So let's run through exactly what I've ended up with. So this is a 2016 N80 Hilux. It's got 160,000 Ks on it. It's an SR, so it's the bottom of the line. We paid $35,000 for this thing. So it is, in my opinion, a perfect platform to build on, to spend some more money, spend more of the budget on modifications and really turn this thing into a justified Tourer wheeler. Just a good truck for me to take on trips and see Australia. You can't really miss it is the big black genuine Toyota bull bar. This thing is gonna do for the time being. If I hit a rule on the way to Woolies, I'm gravy. Down here, it's not winch compatible. So we might run into some troubles in the future if I do wheel this thing hard and need a winch. We've got some spotties, not sure about the quality of them. How long they last is all a big question and it's all up in the air, but they're good for the time being and I don't really see a problem with them, to be honest, they came with the car. Coming around the side, coming down low, we have got these mud terrain, aggressive mud terrain tires. These came from the dealer, Off-Road Pros. We've got a bit of an aggressive sidewall here, so I can straight away bag these down and take it for a wheel, which is which is a massive benefit because I don't have to spend any money on tyres, getting things upgraded from the standard highway to range which come from Toyota. We've got some steelies, bash them out if I damage them. I don't think I'll be damaging them because I don't really want to take a stock Hilux up Little Red. But anyway, we've got some stock suspension. We'll see how it goes at the start. We might have to upgrade it. I don't doubt we're definitely going to be upgrading it with the weight and different things that I want to do with this thing. But uh, let's keep going. All right, tub. Whoa, before I move on, Black mirrors, baby. As you can see, fold in and out. We've got the indicator on the side. Sporty, quick. I'm stoked. We're not gonna probably have to change them. Tub life, tub life. I'm actually so stoked. Maddie, I'm not getting rid of this thing. I don't want a tray. I don't want a canopy. I don't want anything fancy. I want a tub and I wanna run with the tub. 
She's got a Toyota tonneau cover so I can throw my eskies, gazebos, swags, all my little camping, my clothes, camera gear, anything and anything I want, I can throw in here and I'm gonna be gravy. So we've got, yeah, standard SR tub from factory, a few tie down points. She's versatile and I honestly couldn't be happier with a tub. Swinging around the side, we've got a reversing camera. This is something I'm so stoked on. The 79 had a reversing camera, but it was the size of a bus. This thing is a beautiful Australian dual cab ute with a reversing camera, refined. You have no idea how happy I am. I can't get in trouble for reversing into anything. While we're here, we are gonna have a look in the tub. Two latches, pretty handy actually. And look, she's a little bit banged up. You can see on the wheel arches, there's dents, there's scratches all through it which I'm not that disappointed with. It just means that I won't be as afraid to maybe throw an extra couple things in here. We've got a rubber mat, which is great because it's gonna stop things rattling, going around. It does grip a little bit and it will protect the bottom of the tub from anything more like firewood, any other damage that I might end up doing to this thing, which I'm gonna try avoid. Sorry, Matty. Um, moving on, coming into the interior. As you can see straight off the bat, I've thrown a few Explore Life seat organizers in here. I'm getting ready for a few trips. I'm taking this thing bog stock, out testing. I wanna show you guys what a stock dual cab ute can do because that's what a lot of you guys are gonna be able to afford. Now, I'm actually stoked because I'm not gonna to have to spend a lot of money out of the budget on the interior. It is extremely clean for the amount of kilometers it's done. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in this thing. It's got all the buttons on the steering wheel. I've already, I've stolen the quad lock out of the 79 i've thrown it straight in there i might upgrade that to one of the mag ones or one of the ones that i can charge but for now i just grab one that was in the office i'm stoked because i've been already spending and doing quite a few k's in this thing i'm happy with how it is it's all clean door pods are nice all the latches it doesn't look like there's been dogs or pigs in the back so we're gravy all right let's go have a look in the front Coming into the front, I'm actually so stoked with the condition of this thing. We've got a little steering wheel cover already. All the plastics are super clean. We've already got an infotainment system. It's got Bluetooth. I can change the colors. It's a big factor. I actually love that thing. We've got a Tiptronic auto, automatic shift, which I can manually select my gears while I'm in low range, or if I'm coming off a highway, I can flick it into sport mode and have a bit of fun. But yeah, center console's mint. All the cup holders are mint. We've got, yeah, some charging ports, 12 volt all buttons for low range and high range etc don't have to go out and lock the hubs or got a, another big stick like i do in the gu it's good fun but this thing is that refined we've got cruise control i don't have navs on there but i've got it on the quad lock i can just use my phone i'm going to be spending a lot of time in this thing and i'm stoked seat covers it's already got it all so a lot of my money is going to be going into the touring aspect of this thing let's go on to the bonnet so we've got the big old 2.8 d4d here turbo diesel now, straight off the bat, as you can tell, same as what I saw straight off the bat, it is immaculate. It is clean, there's no residue of salt, mud, dirt. It's a clean interior and there's especially no leftovers of any wiring loose. So that means they haven't tried to do any mods, battery systems, etc. which again, grandpa spec, Hilux, I'm stoked. This thing, hopefully it's gonna be reliable for us. Now, something I do wanna to touch on is the DPF. Now this, 2016, between 2015 and 2016 was when the DPF got introduced on these 2.8 litre turbo diesels and they went to <laughs> These things are not meant to be great for reliability, but by the time I've bought this now, it would have already the bed if DPF was affecting it, the way we're gonna be driving it, the way we're gonna be using it, towing it, doing all these highway Ks, DPF is gonna burn. We're not gonna have a lot of troubles with the DPF. So everything's gonna be staying the same and we're gonna be doing it all properly, legally following everything. Just the way everyone does. Alrighty guys, well, there she is, my brand new N80 Hilux. I'm actually that keen to get her out on all the tracks and start getting wheeling. But Maddie doesn't know yet. I'm gonna do a little giveaway to celebrate me getting this car. So hat, shirt, to enter, go into the comments and tell me what car you would have bought. Dual cab, did I make the right decision? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys reckon I should do to this thing. Should I lift it to the moon, go full crazy spec, or should I keep it a practical tourer? Let me know. Follow me on Instagram at Explore4x4. Follow the journey. I cannot wait to take this thing places. But until then, make sure you get out and enjoy the Explore life.